you have arrived at the KOE Nation. But folks, I found it. It took a little bit of hunting, but I found it. My guest appearance on Dads Worldwide, it's called Democrats Cower at His Feet. I found it. We're going to pull this up, folks. And uh, yeah, this uh, I'm looking forward to. I uh, had a really fun time recording this. Um, This was my appearance on Dads Worldwide with Brendan Roy, folks, where we get into all things dad and we uh, might get into the wider world of politics just a little bit. Let's get right into this, folks. All righty. All righty. Bam. There we go. Ah, Almost got you. So, folks, this is my appearance on Dads Worldwide with Brendan Roy. Without further ado, let's get right into this one, folks. What's going on, people? Uh, for those of you who follow me on social media, uh, I I jump on this uh, this show every now and then called Big Buck and Empire, and uh, have discussions, uh, political discussions. And uh, one of those people that I have discussions with is the Phil Koe. He joins the show tonight. And, uh, well, I mean, you're listening to this, so it's just whenever you listen to it, so it's not going to be tonight. But <laughs> he joins the show. We have a great conversation. We uh, have many, many wonderful laughs on the politicians' uh, <laughs> expense, at their expense. So uh, I hope you enjoy. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And Phil, answer the dad questions. And that alone is worth the price of admission. All right? All right, folks. Uh, don't forget to hit me up, Brendan, at Dad's W. W.com. Thanks for listening. Dads worldwide. Why? 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 The first word in family management, family budgeting, insurance, bills, food, vacations, research and development, homework, emails, phone calls. Last week we tried to do an oil change and ended up with a new car. Security. Doors are locked. Windows shut. House alarm is set. Fingerless gloves, dads worldwide, loyal listeners, possibly you. Crack every knuckle before you get get into the fight. <laughs> <laughs> no fight here, Phil. All friends, welcome to another ah. episode of Dads Worldwide. And tonight, you may recognize him from what was it? Two years ago? Yeah, it had to be two years ago from the election night. I mean, battle royale that we had. Phil Koe, welcome back to the show. Uh, thanks for having me here, Brendan. Right here at Dad's Worldwide, Dad's Intercontinental, Dad's uh, <laughs> a little bit here, Intergalactic. A, little bit there, a little bit everywhere. An amazing podcast, but it is I, the man of the hour, the man with the power, the man that makes the other podcast cower, the prince and potentate of the political parlance, the lord of the Scottish Highlands, and one damn handsome man, if I do say so myself, your king of extreme, Phil KOE. You can find me, of course, at KOE Nation on YouTube, TikTok, and Twitch. That is A is in King. O is in Oh My God. You can find KOE Nation on YouTube, TikTok, and Twitch. E is in I'm Extremely Happy to Know. I can find KOE Nation on YouTube, TikTok, and Twitch. So, yes, folks, all very on brand. And I have returned here this evening to Dad's inner ballistic, intercontinental, <laughs> international, foreign and domestic. Folks, it is a pleasure to be here. Thank you. God bless every last one of you. God bless America. And I'm looking forward to this amazing evening. Thank you, sir. And uh, last time we had you on, because we were doing uh this debate i thought it was going to be more of a discussion ended up being a debate uh i didn't get to ask you the dad question so i'm going to start off you have one correct yes one 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 daughter all right yep well god help me dad yeah i know i have a three-year-old and i'm like oh my god (laughs) and how old's your daughter 13 Yep. I don't. I don't look Get forward ready. to that. Get I know. I. Uh, I would never make fun of you. I would never laugh at you. I would only look at my future. Um, yeah, look into your future. Yeah. yeah, it's it's coming. Uh, um, yeah, these kids they grow like corn stalks. You like blink a few times. And I what, know. What, what, what what happened? Like I have a ten year old. I'm like blown. I'm blown away every time I see him. He's getting. He's going to be taller than I am. 
So it's, it's one of the things like why I try to be kind of chill as a parent, because like they're not going to be this little for all that long anyways. It, I so, mean, that's why I'm trying to spend a, a, as much time as possible with them. So mm-hmm. I joke, I joke, but it, you know, I say that I hang out with them now because they like me right now. So, you know, and so, yep. and I hope that's, I hope that's not far from the truth when they get older, but. Yep. Yep. Because like, even at this age, I'm still hero dad, you know, like yeah. she, she yeah. doesn't hate me. So yeah. it's like, I'm, I've done something right. All right. It's <laughs> usually around the age where teenagers start to hate at least one of their parents. Yep. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully I can, hopefully I can get through this, but like, look, let me knock on wood now and I'll report back to y'all in a few years. See how that's going. Um, all right. Well, so, I'm rooting for you question here. One, sir, question I'm one. I'm curious. What has been your proudest dad moment? Mm. I know there's a lot. Okay. Um, I know this is cheating. I know this is cheating, but I have to do this. It's a tie. It is a tie. All right. Um, one was when she was seven, and she had never seen Star Wars. Had no idea what Star Wars even was. Yep. And we watched the first movie on, like, a Tuesday. And then Wednesday, we watched the second movie. And she's got, I think she had, like, kindergarten, maybe first or second grade. I forget which one. But really, really young kiddo. And we watched the second movie, and there's a scene where Obi-Wan never told you. He told me enough. He told me you killed him. And he goes, no, I am your father. (laughs) My daughter goes, turns to me, is that true? (laughs) And and then when Luke sells it, no, she knows it's true. And it's like, oh my goodness. I'm like, yes, look at that shit. I just made your childhood magical, motherfucker. I didn't say it exactly like that. You know, sprinkle more, you know, tacked on it than that. Um, And then the other one came much more recently was um oh and by the way with uh, that one she then looked at me it was like 11 o'clock at night she's like dad can we watch the third movie I'm like fuck yes we're watching the third movie right now <laughs> pop it in she fell asleep like 30 seconds after the credits <laughs> hit on the third movie and i'm like yes look at that shit i mean to be fair the credits are quite long on those movies so. yes yeah, yes yeah, but you yeah, know the minute ba-da, ta-da, 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 <laughs> yeah. she's out oh <laughs> so she, she stayed awake to the very last scene and then out 30 seconds later i'm like yeah. nice well done yeah and then uh so that one from when she was very young uh as she's been gotten older um my daughter and i we have uh differences in philosophy in politics in political philosophy in just general like everything uh, from theology there's differences that we have and she was kind of nervous about expressing them because from a lot of other members of her family differences like that are just not tolerated and so mm. she thought she was going to get the same from me and i was like no no i <sighs> I am your father. It is my responsibility to deliver you to a healthy adulthood. It's not my job to police what it is you think. I care about the epistemology and how you are able to properly form a good rational thought. I don't, it's not my job to police what the contents of your mind are. And after that, we had a really good catharsis and after that like we talk about everything like and like it's great having this kind of like ability to like she trusts me with pieces of her life that normally but like a lot of fathers don't get to hear because they're like no i like i'm not going to judge you because you think x y or z okay and so that when we reached that catharsis when she knew she could trust me with even thoughts that like she's not allowed to entertain in other areas. That was one of my proudest moments as a father. That's awesome, man. Like I, that's a way to teach your kid how to critically think about things, you know, allowing them to free express, maybe correct them here and there, but like, you know, allowing them to talk or or Mm -hmm. letting, you know, and then them willing to share is that's phenomenal, man. That's awesome. Yep. I'm like, don't get me wrong. There are times I'm like, "Mm, yeah, that doesn't, that's not going to work. I I don't don't know about that. Like, (laughs) it's like, why? But like, what I do a lot is 
a question that I use is, what do you mean by that? And I don't just yeah. do that like with her, but I do that like in the wider area of like in all the places that I go on these different varying panels. When I have guests on KOE Nation on YouTube, TikTok, and Twitch, uh, come on, I'm never above shameless self promotion. <laughs> but um, I rather than like, how do you define that? Which is kind of the standard question of the day. People ask you, how do you define that? Which sounds so confrontational and almost like kind of courtroomy. Um, like when you ask, what do you mean by that? like you actually kind of drill down to what's actually trying to be discussed here. And that's when you can get some. Oh yeah. Of course you're, answers. you're, you're forcing them to justify their reason. You know, you're forcing yeah. them to really think about why they came to that conclusion and try to have them drill it down to a logical conclusion. So yeah, I think that that's great. That's a great question to ask. Yeah, but like I said, like how do you define that versus what do you mean by that? It's almost the same question, but yeah. one is way less confrontational. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a good way, like especially when like a kid, you're trying to help her, like you know, get to a certain point, and like I'm not trying to guide you there, but I'm trying to like, okay, so what do you mean by that? So why is that? Like, yeah. and so I, t I would say we probably both moderate our views a little bit when we're around each other, but <laughs> at the same time, it, we're both trying to understand the other. Absolutely. Awesome. That is great. All right. Uh, second question here. Let's go with, the. Um, hmm. Bring what, it on. What is one skill that you'd like to master? One skill that I would like to master that I currently don't. My God. Um, I don't know. I mean, gonna being be tough. a jack this of is, all trades is and every be, I knew single thing that. that I apply myself at. Um, <laughs> gosh, I guess um, I'd like to bone up a little bit more on the piano. Okay. I used to play nice. guitar a lot back in the day and yeah. bass guitar and such. Um, piano and like, this is going to sound like so weird, but like I've always really loved a harpsichord. Like I know it's not a very popular uh, instrument these days, but like a harpsichord, like a piano, like my grandma had a great piano, uh, but it also had a pedal where it could become like a harpsichord. Yeah. And so it, without that pedal, it would have these long, haunting notes. <laughs> but with the harpsichord, it was just immediate, and you got the f complete fullness of the note up front. And so to me, I really always – and so to me, I never got as deep into piano as I could have because life. So yeah. that's one thing uh, if I were to – advance one skill greater in life. It'd probably be something along the lines of piano or uh, like my old man. He's an amazing, he's an electrician, carpenter, welder. Uh, I probably need to ask him a few more electrician questions. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that, I mean, yeah, when you're a farmer, man, you have to be all those yeah. things. Yeah. Uh, like he's taught me his secret sauce to welding. So like that's, that's, invaluable because he kind of combines carpentry and welding which is kind of a, the way he builds things like you know like <laughs> did you just dovetail the joint only that? thing that breaks these welds apart <laughs> yeah. so yeah. did you just dovetail join that what is going on yeah yeah, yeah. He, and yeah he'll make sure it's all measured properly <laughs> and like taught me all this while we were building a chicken tractor that's awesome <laughs> yeah uh, so uh, th those are the kind of skills because to me I, I, I was even just telling this to my daughter the other day that in ter you're, you can strive if you want to be like, say, the best welder in the world, or if you want to be the best like baton twirler in the world or whatever, whatever the thing is, you can strive to be that. But there's only one person that can be the best welder in the world. There's only one person that can be the best swimmer in the world. There's only one person that can be the best X, Y, or Z in the world. But if you work on a talent stack, if you have a unique stack of talents, yeah. that makes you invaluable to almost any organization. Because guess what? The world's greatest welder. You know, like the New York Stock Exchange don't give a fuck <laughs> about the world's greatest welder. They just don't care. Uh, so that's, you know, in, in terms of skills, that's something I always kind of emphasize is make sure you've got an excellent talent stack. Yep. And then, you know, world beating the path to your door and such. There you go. Well, that leads me to my my next question, actually, which was, what was the uh, most important thing your dad has passed on to you? Boy, howdy. Gosh, that's a tough one. 
Um, like other than work ethic, your hand is never too big for a broom or a hammer. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> uh, Honesty, you need to actually have integrity or people aren't going to give a damn about you. It took me a second to remember this because this was because I wanted to get the quote exact, exactly right. This is a lesson that my grandfather taught my father who taught this to me and he learned it from his father. OK, so this is a family wisdom that's gotten us through four generations and it's rang true as from the moment I heard it to this very moment that I, you hear it from me now, it can take a lifetime to build a good reputation and you can blow it all in a minute. Yep. Okay. And so like, that's your integrity and your reputation is an actual possession. And so that's yeah. like, it, it can be taken from you. It can be destroyed by yourself. And yes, it can even be bought and sold. And so that's uh, it's like it or not. Like, yeah, we know uh, we, we can all think off the top of our heads, at least three people that they sold that integrity down the river because <laughs> the paycheck was big enough. Okay. Yeah. Like, but yeah, so it can take you a lifetime to build that good reputation but it can all be gone in a moment. And then also, I mean, just like basic stuff, like a killing frost is uh, at least five hours of 28 degrees. And then <laughs> the live embryos of the seeds that you're trying to grow for seed crop for next year, aren't going to make it if they've been exposed to five hours of 20, like I could keep going. Like my father <laughs> taught me so much that I know in this life. I mean, how to read a balance sheet, the, the fact that a lot of idiots think that profit and loss is the most important two numbers to look at in a company. No, 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 no. Even it, a good company can come back from a bad year. It's assets and liabilities. Those yeah. are the two big numbers. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> and, and so how to deal with bankers, how to like, I, I mean, like the list goes really fucking long. How to, you know, uh, Kernel of corn should probably be planted about two knuckles deep. I know, super scientific, but that's actually how we measure. <laughs> like, okay, it's two knuckles deep. That's good enough. So that's like a w most important thing. Well, you, you guys don't. Me. You guys don't hand plant. You guys have like. No, we've plan. got like actual planters, but when we get out and dig behind them yeah. to see how they're planting, we yeah, make yeah. sure they're two knuckles deep. Uh, Otherwise, gotcha. they're I not gotcha. planting properly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, like even the, like just your finger, our finger is still the measurement. Um, That's awesome. Like, like I I could go on and on. Like what's the, but like I said, the most. No, no, we got more thing, questions. We got more questions. <laughs> like, oh, uh, I was about to say I can filibuster you. I mean, I'm I am the filibuster Phil. But yeah. yes, I I think. Uh, the reputation thing that's probably the most important thing yeah that's huge i it took me a while to learn that <laughs> um all right not that i was that bad i just yeah one or two incidents i wish i could change you know all right uh what, oh, if you don't make it to the end of this life with if you make it to the end of this life with no regrets you did not really live yeah yeah seriously right <laughs> that's what when people say that to me like i don't regret anything i've done i'm like really like not what not like one thing time you've had on this earth. Like, <laughs> yeah. Jesus, like, like no you should yeah. have a handful of regrets i was gonna like, say i could think of quite a few i I could take if i would take back if i could <laughs> i mean you took some risks in this life yeah. uh, uh, uh what's one childish thing that you still enjoy to do okay um Full disclosure, it's uh, something that me and the kiddo like still do is, um, and she's got this big old Lego tower that she's building on. Yeah. And she keeps building up and up and up on it. And actually, hang on just one second. I'm going to grab it real quick. It's right there. Hang on. All right. For those of you only <laughs> listening to the podcast, Phil is out of camera getting a tower. Oh, geez. There we go. Yeah. That's... So yeah, she will just keep building on this thing and building up and up and up <laughs> yeah. on it. And it's a big son of a bitch. And while she's doing this, 
I'll like, you know, be clicking on my computer, talking with her, sometimes even throw a piece or two on here with her. You know, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And we will talk life and truth and just all kinds of just craziness. Uh, and it's like, she, this is, this isn't what we do all the time, but like, this has been like three months of just like putting a few pieces on and we're just talking about like, you know, God, religion, we're talking about human courtship, talking about like any kinds of crazy shit. Like it's, it's so, and I don't know if it's childish or just like me letting her. And what's funny is like, I took a bucket of some of them from my dad's house, which my grandma bought for him back in the 50s and 60s. Oh, so there's wow. some pieces in here that are from the 1950s and 1960s and some that I bought for her like in 2012. Yeah. So it's kind of <laughs> funny that it's all together right there. Oh, that's awesome. That's uh that's it's great that it's so, yeah, something you guys are doing together. So, yeah, that's uh <laughs> that if you want like one childish thing that I still participate in it would probably that would be the number one thing nice nice all right uh what's the one thing you hope your child learns from you uh very much the same lesson about your reputation yep and also the art of persuasion if <laughs> wielded properly <laughs> is more powerful than gravity Gravity is thought to be the most powerful force in this universe. But if you're good enough at persuading enough smart people, they will build you a rocket that can break a gravity well of a planet. And eventually, if you're good enough, you're going to persuade enough people to break the gravity well of a goddamn black hole of Jupiter, fucking anything, <laughs> the sun, if we want to, enough. Like, uh, that's what I mean when persuasion is more powerful than gravity. If you've ever heard, there's a thing called a fusion candle, where theoretically it's a device that could literally move Jupiter or a star. And it's something that it's a two-sided, basically torch, think of like a cutting torch, and you have it fall into the planet, the cutting torch starts blowing in one side to counteract gravity, and then it blows on the other side to start actually moving <laughs> the mass of the planet so if we wanted to with enough persuasion power move the very stars in our galaxy so yes persuasion if wielded properly is more powerful than gravity itself and so that would be the most important lesson if i could impart to her would be that what what, what could go wrong with that torch i mean really moving the planet i mean nothing Hey, you know, science, <laughs> it's kind of the joke of science is all about coulda, not shoulda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, uh, let's see. I think three more questions here. Toilet paper, over or under? And there is a right answer. Over and anyone else that does it under is a suspect communist. There you go. I'm, like, maybe, I'm sorry. Possibly like, even, maybe maybe Al Qaeda. I, yeah. like, I I I think that's reasonable. I was gonna say definitely a triple commie for sure. Oh, definitely a triple commie, <laughs> a quadruple Marxist, yeah. Um, yeah. an octuple Leninist. I, I don't even know what that means, but it's it's gotta be bad. Uh, what is one piece of advice you would give to new fathers? Oh God, I only have one valuable piece of advice to new fathers, mothers, parents of any kind. The things that annoy you now <laughs> will, the, yeah, the things that annoy the shit out of you, <laughs> screaming, crying, whining, drooling little baby that keeps you up all night, kicking its legs at you, having to change diaper, those things that annoy you now will be the things you miss more than anything down the road. <laughs> like, I cannot tell you what I would not give to have that again. And so that is my advice to new parents is truly enjoy that. Yes. Enjoy the it moment. does not last long. I think that's great advice. All right. Last question. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Who? <sighs> Technically, isn't it sort of a bread taco? I'll go with that. It's a no 
perfect. I love it. <laughs> no, I, I don't know if I, I mean, also, like, if you take a pizza and fold it in half, is it a taco? No, I mean, because you have corn tortillas and not flour tortilla. But you can have flour tortilla. To me, any pizza can potentially become a taco if you believe in yourself. <laughs> You you're persuaded. <laughs> yeah, like, I think like no, no, I believe in myself. This is taco. I can eat this fucker. I don't get like no, I can do it. I can do it. I'm not scared. What are you doing uh, with that guacamole? Nothing. Guacamole. Yeah, guacamole. So, the, so the final question was hot dog sandwich or no? Yep. Okay, you know that's 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 fair. And then I guess the next question is cereal soup. Whoa. Mind blowing here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I feel like soup always has vegetables and, you know, some type of protein. I mean, cereal's got, you know, whole grains. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess. <laughs> That's funny. Now, there's people that it's called secondhand smoking. But like to me, I like to think of uh, I'm like a, a secondhand vegetarian because <laughs> like on occasion I eat grass fed beef. Yeah. So that's secondhand veg because like the shit I eat ate just this one thing. So yeah. that that sort of counts. That's like having salad and steak all at the same time. That's not a problem. Like, <laughs> yeah, not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Like to me though, like I've said this many times, I'm offered a salad. I'll just like, I'm sorry, sir, ma'am. Uh, salad is what food eats. Yeah, it's and true. Now, now bring me my very large cut of red meat. <laughs> uh, all right, Phil. That's the that's the end of the dad questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, I know that some of them are a little tougher than others, but uh, <laughs> uh, now. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Uh, we haven't spoken in quite a while, but uh, do you have a New Year's resolution that you're going to disappoint yourself with in a month? Just curious, throwing that out there. Uh, I don't do New Year's resolutions, but yeah. for every year, I have the same resoluteness as I have with every day, and that is to live my life to the extreme. And so every day, you see, because people ask, what does it mean to be extreme? To live your life to the extreme is to topple oneself and to conquer oneself every day and never following the worst advice you ever got in your life. Everybody's given you this advice and they mean well, but it's the worst advice you have ever gotten in your life. And every time you get it, you need to ignore it immediately. Just be yourself. No! Be better than yourself. It's not like you couldn't stand a little bit of improvement. It's like all of us could improve a little bit. We could all be either a better husband or father or boyfriend or son or like, and for, for all the ladies in the audience, you could all be a better mother, a better, a better sister, a better daughter, a better, like it's, we could all be better in this life. We could all improve. Um, so folks, that is what it is to live to the extreme. And that's the only way that I'm going to live for every day, let alone just a flip of the year on the calendar. Yes, sir. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really one for resolutions, but I'm always trying to be better. Like you said, that's, that's exactly what I was going to say. Um, I fail constantly. I'm just ask my wife, but I'm, <laughs> but, yeah, but I, I, I really do. I really try to be better. I try to be a a, a great employee. I'm going to be try uh, try to be a great business owner soon. I'm going to be. Uh, I try to be a great husband, a great father, a great brother, uh, a great a great son. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't always succeed, but I I really do try. Uh, so yeah, try to be better. That's great. Great. So yes, live your life to the extreme. So basically, you're a denizen and a citizen of the KOE nation. Basically, I mean, you, yeah, you've, I mean, you've already passed your citizenship. Yeah. Test. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, place place uh, your hand upon the Bible. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Do I have to say China? 
China. <laughs> um, and do you renounce China in all its ways? <laughs> in all its evil ways. And the rocket man. Uh, okay, well, uh, I didn't want to talk about Trump first. I, I just want to talk about the the reps, uh, the Republicans in the re uh, House of Representing. Uh, they finally get the power and they can't get a speaker. <laughs> <laughs> they've had eight currently they've had eight votes and they i think it's 11 now is it 11 now yeah. oh my god yeah they the last thing they checked more, was eight and they got closer because they got like it's only a matter of time because they got marjorie taylor green to crack oh did they and really so yeah it's yeah. only but like they, they ain't got enough yet but if they got marjorie taylor green to crack they must have taken her to the back the great spider oh. must be like no you don't understand marjorie taylor green it must happen because <laughs> It's like I, as people know, in 2024, I'm running for president of the United States of, of America, and uh, my my big plan is when I go to the back and they take me to the Great Spider or the Aliens Illuminati, I'm just gonna be doing this shit. Like, <laughs> Your phone, just, <laughs> just like live streaming that shit. Like, okay, and so so how many aliens are looking down at us right now oh there's like 58 different civilizations they're all watching us we're like a giant reality show motherfucker i knew Damn it, it. <laughs> i fucking knew it like oh yeah you what yeah that and if we were in like the marvel dc multiple universe multiverse shit it's like when people arrive here we're like yeah we're in the trump timeline yeah. <laughs> it's just the easiest way to explain it to yeah. folks. Orange man timeline. Yep. Orange man. Now what was the question again, sir? Uh well I say uh th they finally oh, yes, the Yeah, they find yeah, the house. They can't they can't seem to get a speaker together. Um I've already seen people say that they finally got power and they can't even get their act together to get a speaker uh voted in. So the well, question as somebody that wants to see to make sure that Joseph R. Biden is given the full jurisprudence and due process of the investigative powers that are very much owed in his direction. Um, I, I want to make sure that we get all the concessions we need to make sure that McCarthy doesn't try. The minute he said, well, we're not just going to, you know, impeach biden all willy-nilly that's when we knew oh fuck he's compromised <laughs> the, the yeah. great spider got to him you don't understand mccarthy we might like so yeah the great spider head of the illuminati whatever what you know pick your conspiracy end boss okay and whoever that is that they talk to uh <laughs> Yeah. So they got to Marjorie Taylor Greene today. Oh my so God. Like, like but they got to McCarthy a while ago. And to me it's like no, if you're going to undercut it, then what the fuck is the point of even having these committees all filled with folks if we're not even going to be able to fucking do the investigations that we actually want to do? So I'm afraid McCarthy's got to give a few more concessions. And it's like, uh, I forget, it was, uh, I believe, Chicken in one of our side chats. Somebody asked, so what, what happens if they can't get a speaker of the house chicken goes they can't spend our taxes more I'm like well you know kind of sort of technically but like the Babylon B article you put it's like oh yeah. you know speaker or mccarthy says we won't be able to send more money to ukraine yeah. if i'm held up and what's funny is i sent that to a bunch of moderate normies and they had no idea why that was funny <laughs> Like, I was like, wow, holy shit. Like, yeah, they unironically thought, like, if it didn't say Babylon B, they, if it said CNN, they would have, like, completely agreed with it. Like, it but was, then is that a moderate normie, the one that doesn't understand the Warhawk take on something? Like, I don't I don't know. I guess, yeah, yeah they, I guess it is a moderate. It's unironically pro Ukraine <laughs> yeah. discussion. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, wow, okay, all righty. But so to me, we can eventually get there. We will get there. Yeah. Um, well, the, I was listening McCarthy to. I was listening. Eventually, going to get it, but he's going to have to make some concessions. If not, Steve Scalise is a real good pick. Now, Jim Jeffries. Every time I hear him talk, I'm like, oh boy, howdy. Yeah. This guy. Every time he gets a new speech, like you can kind of feel like he's starting to feel his own. It's like, hey, you know what? Maybe I should be Speaker of the House. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're all right. I should. And like, so yeah, this is going to be a fun couple of years because, oh God Almighty, Biden. Like that fucker, 
is getting impeached. Like it's it's gonna be fucking hilarious to watch. Like uh, I, mean, I mean, not if the just, not if the Republicans can't get their act together. But the but the so okay that's so that's Biden's only hope is yeah it really takes, like, it seriously is months. it seriously is uh, the uh, representative I think his name's Andy Biggs. I heard him on a show I think yesterday, and he was talking about how. They said, we will vote for you if you do a balanced budget amendment. He said, no, if you will go back to Trump era border protection. Uh, and he said, no. And then they offered him I, another concession. And he was just like, no, like, and they'll read the bill, uh, read the bill. They wanted 72 hours to actually review bills that are going through Congress. And he wouldn't agree to that. This is like the this is this is the most inane thing. And I was just listening to Ron Paul the other day. It's so funny. Like when he first went into Congress, he's like, "Yeah, we read every bill. That's what you're supposed to do." <laughs> like he's just Doctor Paul is just like this is this is insane. Like they they put a bill up. It's been it's been out in the hands of the representative for eight hours, if that, and they're voting on it. You know, it's insane. It's ridiculous. Four thousand page bills. You can't read them. So so. McCarthy is so far is un, completely unwilling to uh, to kowtow to anybody. I mean, he's arrogant enough that he just, as soon as Nancy Pelosi moved out of the office, he moved right himself right in. So, uh, I, I I think you're right. He's going to have to concede a lot because uh, it's going to take some time. But yeah, I do believe that he will get it. I just he's. I mean, it's not going to be quick unless he actually. No, it's like concedes. what they're wanting is any one member of Congress can recall your House speakership, and so he's like, "Motherfucker, I am not going to be at the goddamn mercy of Bobert and fucking <laughs> and yeah, Marjorie right. Taylor Greene." Like, no. Yeah. So he's like, he could probably get away with like six. Any six Republicans can recall you, and if he does that, he'll probably get it because really, we just want to make sure that he doesn't fuck over the investigations because if he does that then fuck him and he can go right out the door because it's time we need to audit biden and hunt uh, joe and hunter's joint checking account see what's been going on in there and yeah like the impeachment hearings are going to be coming shortly thereafter so speaking of mr sleepy joe uh who do you think is going to be the Democrat nominee? I cannot imagine it's him, and I can't imagine it's Kamala Harris. So who do they go to? Um, you're going to hate me here, but the Democrats, they don't want to pull this card yet because they have one card for when they're in desperate, dire straits, and they think they have 0% chance of winning, and they can go from not being able to win at all to 100% chance they are going to win. Okay? It's their one it's the one ace in the hole and Kamala Harris ain't it Joe Biden basically if he decides to run got a 50-50 shot basically but if he can't crack 80 million votes it doesn't matter if he's running against DeSantis against Trump against Marjorie Taylor fucking Green it doesn't matter if he can't crack 80 million votes the Republicans going to take it Donald yeah. Trump was off by 44,000 votes in Arizona Wisconsin and Georgia that was a difference and Joe Biden had to become the most popular president in history in order to be able to overcome that. So Trump showed Republican candidates the way and Biden's not going to be able to crack that 80 million. Uh, so the one Trump card though, that the Democrats have, and you're going to hate, you're going to hate that I'm right when I say it is Michelle Obama. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, if they decide to run Michelle Obama, the likelihood of her winning is astronomically high. I agree. Yeah, you're right. And so that's their Trump card. They don't want to pull it out yet. Um, but they, if it looks like dark days are coming and nobody's going to be able to save them, they're going to call for Michelle and she will probably win. Oh, man, I hate how much you're right on this one. <laughs> I don't like it neither. And I can't, I can't, I can't, I mean, I can't stand her. I hear her talk and I'm just like, ugh. I mean, it's not worse than Hillary. Hillary was the worst. She, her cackle and everything. She, I mean, she was god awful. But I know. But, but like, I mean, I mean, but I listened to in Ohio and Pennsylvania <laughs> fucking love her. And apparently that's all that matters. Yeah. But it, it's, 
I've listened to her speeches. She says nothing. And she's, I mean, she just, I, she just says nothing. <laughs> like, and she contradicts herself. And one of her speeches was just completely plagiarized. Um, one of her last speeches, actually. Uh, yeah. But, yeah well, like, I mean, what does shot, it matter? She I mean, doesn't write her own speeches. Yeah. And then, I mean, uh, yeah, Biden, Biden lied yeah, so many like, freaking times. Biden won because he had the Obama rub. Okay. Who's got more Obama rub than Michelle? Yeah. Okay. Like yep. she's true. She's a shoe in. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I that... don't like it. I think literally, if DeSantis were to take it, um, that's a very strong candidate. I don't think they even run her against him for re-election. I think they wait till he's done and then they put Michelle up. Yeah. So uh, that's that is potential, um, but to me, I think I think they're gonna tr fucking force Joe to do it again. They're gonna make the elder abuse campaign go for another time around, <laughs> and they're gonna see if they can. Because like, yeah, when you watch these campaigns with Joe, it it does like feel a little bit like you're watching a protracted and ritualized elder abuse. There's sometimes I really honestly. I, I almost feel bad for him because I feel like, you know, he, I've said it multiple times. Like, I feel like he should be at home resting, eating pudding, you know, doing whatever, yep. you know, you know, doing whatever old people do with their time, you know, just resting. Cause it's, it's, it, to me, it's obvious he's not well. Uh, no. So I, I, but then I, only part of me feels bad for him. So, cause I, I know remember, what a piece of garbage uh, he is. So the show, our cartoon president, great show. <laughs> and like Joe Biden, he was always in his basement and like, he was so thrilled when Jill installed a pee drain into the corner. Oh, of the room. And now I don't have to go up the stairs because Jill installed my pee drain. <laughs> and then so it's like, no, I'm sorry. I got to go to this campaign event. If I don't, Jill says she's going to plug up my pee drain. Oh it's like God. it was his biggest thing. Like he didn't have to go up the stairs. He's got a piss drain now. Oh. And it was like, and so yeah, I bet that's where Joe's like, eh, I'm just in the basement. I got my pee drain. I'm watching my Matlock. And that's <laughs> it. Like it's and his handlers are working like the little sociopath status they are. That's awesome. Oh my God. I have a story for that, but I'm not gonna share that right now. So uh all right. Uh Trump. Now he get, he gets raided in Mar-a-Lago, right? He yep. they told him that he they were going to recommend criminal charges for January sixth, and now they conceded that. And Mar-a-Lago, they we've heard absolutely nothing. It for it was like a week, two weeks straight, where it went back and forth, and then all of a sudden it went quiet. So, I guess my question is. Do you think either one is going to result in any amount of charges? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it was always a show. It was always just a public... Uh, it was always just a publicity stunt. So, no, it's not going to result in any criminal charges of any kind. They might try something, like, right as the primaries start. Like, I could see the Southern District of New York trying some shit right as primary season starts just to try and muddy the waters but no nothing that's going to stick is going to come from any of this because it was always fake news hoax bullshit we always knew it was and turns out what do you know now vindicated I, again i really so january 6th was garbage that all that stuff was gar hot garbage like I, I the no one watched those show trials and it it just it the, it was a nothing, you know, yeah, yeah, it was just nothing. So I was really not surprised at that one. That one, I was just like, yeah, like he shouldn't, yeah, that shouldn't well, be charged. But look, with like Mar-a-Lago. Democrats, the reason you lost the House is because you spent two years doing public public therapy sessions about January 6th rather than trying to actually help the American people when shit got hard. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they helped make it hard, but yeah, they, yeah, they, I, I mean, just their last budget alone shows that they don't give a shit about the American people. So, uh, but that being said, I, mean, I really we've, thought we've Mar got money to send to that Ukraine there. Bro. Oh yeah, we, we we need more money. <laughs> That's why I knew we need to elect the speaker. Um, so, <laughs> I really thought Mar-a-Lago something might come of that. Whether whether it's fabricated or not, I really thought 
I really thought that something might finally put at least push Trump into court because if he's in proceedings, then he might not be able to run that type of thing. So do maybe maybe that will still happen. I mean, because if they wait long enough, um, you know, they'll hit him during uh, a campaign season. Yeah, apparently so did Merrick Garland, but uh, nothing yet. So, yeah. but yeah, Merrick Garland, like, yeah, you don't think there's a little bit of uh, impartiality there? The guy who, you know, stiffed him for his Supreme Court position. Yeah. He's now signing off on raiding the guy's <laughs> home. Like, uh, that's Banana Republic shit right there. So <laughs> luckily, Merrick Garland goes away in two years. Um, so l- luckily he will not like, thank Christ alive. He never made it to the Supreme court. Otherwise we'd have to deal with his ass for the rest of our lives. We only have to deal with him for two more years now. They don't do it anymore. Like a lot of the stuff they don't do, but in the constitution or, I mean, it doesn't expli- explicitly say it, but you can impeach judges. They don't do it. They'll never do it. Not nowadays anyway, they, but you could do it technically. So, um, yes, technically, but it's kind of like adding an amendment to the Constitution. It yeah. can be done, but it's a Herculean effort. Yeah, no one wants to really do it. Yeah, yeah, no, no. no. Uh, yeah. And it's one of those things, like when people talk about, like we need to amend the Constitution to change the Second Amendment. I'm always like, okay, I know you're not going to amend it to the point where I got like suddenly all these like way more Second Amendment rights. Like, no, no, fuck you. Nice try. <laughs> Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, budget 1.7 trillion dollars, 44 billion to Ukraine (laughs) and 800 over 800 billion for, uh, the defense budget. What's, what's your take on this behemoth? Well, you know, when I am elected president, Uh, A lot of this gravy train to a lot of these different places around the world is going to be significantly thinner in its gravy. It's going to there's going to be more milk poured in to definitely thin it out a little more uh, because, yeah, the massive military defense budgets of a significant portion of that will be repurposed to Space Force so that we can (laughs) conquer space. Jesus. And whether you like it or not, guess what? If we run space, we run the Earth. You want to know why? Because even though the fact that he was more powerful, why did Anakin Skywalker lose to Obi-Wan Kenobi? Because he had the high ground. Okay? (laughs) If we just have satellites with some tungsten rods in them pointing down at Russia, China, fucking everybody else, like, guess what? we kind of win. It's like, yeah, no, fuck you. Or else we just release the tungsten rods. They pull them down. Gravity does the rest. All the fun, none of the fallout. So yeah, like it's once we, (laughs) once we conquer space, we conquer the earth and then we conquer the solar system. And so, yes, a piece of this massive military defense budget needs to be repurposed to space so that the people, the, the several hundred trillion people that will inhabit our solar system in 10,000 years are not all speaking Chinese. <laughs> all right. Interesting. Interesting. So uh, take care of their gravy train and pump it into Space Force. Yes. And ironically, like, and uh, that, that's, that is a very, that will be one of the most consequential things of my administration is actually funding and repurposing the Space Force. So <laughs> that, and I, I know that sounds like a, like people with military experience all kind of roll their eyes and hooey, but no, in 10,000 years, if our progeny is actually exploring the stars, children in school are going to learn. And then in the 21st century, the Space Force in which we are all members of was founded by a person on planet Earth named Donald Trump. (laughs) Yes, 10,000 years from now, Donald Trump will be educated to young children. That'll be the only snippet they know about the man. But it'll be like, so there you go. So yes, that that is what the KOE administration will be doing with at least a nice little chunk of the defense budget once we uh, wrap up this whole Ukraine nonsense. Yeah, 
and uh, hopefully Yemen as well. Uh, yeah, he'll be known for Space Force and being impeached twice. Unsuccessfully, but twice. <laughs> He's the impeachment champion. He is. He's the, he he is. more impeachments than any other president. Okay? Like, yeah. Because he he's the best. He even defeated one while he wasn't even president. Okay? <laughs> he didn't even have an executive powers and still beat out that impeachment. Okay? <laughs> That's pretty fucking impressive. Well done. He only had super citizen powers and still didn't fucking... <laughs> they still didn't have the balls to go through. Them, that would so. be a great speech if he just comes out and be like, who's, who's been impeached twice? This guy. Who beat the oh. impeachments? This guy. They can't get me. They can't get me. <laughs> yeah, what's funny is uh, Matt Gates. He actually nominated Trump for Speaker of the House. That's awesome. Um, and to me, I was like, wow. Somebody needs to start the Twitter hashtag. Hashtag Mike Lindell was right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. they're gonna nominate Trump the Speaker of the House, and then he's gonna become the president through this thing here. And like, yeah, that was what that's where Mike Lindell was having to go at one point to make Trump president. It was, oh my god. Uh it was interesting to watch. But yeah, so let's see. Uh uh we were uh oh yes, what what are we gonna do with this massive budget? Yeah. <sighs> I, like I said, I think that's about as much as I'm going to be able to do. Like if I try to divert any more money out of the military industrial complex, I mean, like we, we've seen what happens to the presidents that try to divert money from the military industrial complex. I mean, hell, Trump was just slightly not friendly to the intelligence community and look what they did to him. So like, <laughs> it, I, I believe I've said this many times, but I'm going to have to end up nominating to the head of the DOD, basically the equivalent of Dick Cheney's floating brain in a jar to be allowed to keep my office. And if I do that, they'll probably let me stay president for like six terms. <laughs> <laughs> i mean i don't see why not i don't see why not um, oh god he, he had the foresight to make the head of the dod which is the biggest budget in all god's creation yes it's dick cheney's floating brain in a jar okay he gets it that's this all right look, uh, this <laughs> kid's it. got moxie let's give him six terms <laughs> <laughs> like what <well>, fuck <laughs> uh all right and um last but not least the i think the uh biggest freedom of speech uh blunder that's going to be in our era for sure is uh the twitter files uh if you haven't heard the fbi is pretty much single-handedly responsible not single-handedly because there's other sort of three-letter agencies that were also responsible including yes. the dhs um for limiting peach people's speech through twitter Mm -hmm. It was through more, but like we're just getting the. Oh yeah, the we're we're getting the info through Twitter. Now, yeah. here's the thing: I, I always like to posit this to people, and it's something to keep before your mind when you hear about these Twitter files. Benito Mussolini, he actually ran an openly fascist government, and he defined fascism as the merger of state and corporate power. I'm gonna say that again. The merger of state and corporate power. And now we have a form of techno fascism that's arisen where we have the government going to private corporations and either through carrot and stick. And let's be frank, it's a combination of threats and bribery to get them to basically carry out state prerogatives that they could not achieve through law or legislation. That is definitionally fascist. And so the Twitter files were not just, oh my, the, we got a little bit of corruption maybe in the FBI. We got a little corruption maybe in Twitter. No, it's unfortunately like the parody of the old Beatles song now. We all live in a fascist regime, a fascist <laughs> regime, a fascist regime. We all live in a fascist regime. Eat it, folks. Eat it. It doesn't taste good. <laughs> but this is our lives now. This is our government now. This is how we are managed and controlled. They don't believe in information control. They believe in narrative control. If you don't have the right narratives, we now have the evidence you will be silenced. Doesn't matter if they do it through hook or crook. They will silence you. Yep. So it's... 
So there's been so there's multiple things they they were using lawyers, they were using uh, FBI agents who are now lawyers at Twitter or or became lawyers at Twitter, um, and there was also a payment for I think two or three years they paid Twitter over three uh, I think it was three million dollars, and the other thing was okay so so there's the way to think of it, if you're still thinking, well, it's a private company, they can do what they want. But here's the problem Windy with that. Face. Yeah, yeah. Here's the problem with that. If the FBI, the White House, the CIA, or DHS, or name your three letter agency, calls Twitter and says, this person should not be on Twitter anymore, and then they do it, they're acting as an actor. agent of. Yeah, exactly. When I was a Border Patrol agent, if I looked at someone and said, hey, go talk to that person right there they are acting as an agent of me as the border patrol as a, a federal worker as a government worker they were acting as an agent for me now i never did that however th the twitter files proves that government in general i mean you can name the three letter agency they had access to twitter including oh what was it it wasn't baronson it was a uh, different someone else uh, I won't remember them, but they uh, basically it was like a the governor of uh, of a, a state that called Twitter and was like, "You need to get this person off the line." <laughs> like it was like, "What?" Like how many people have access to Twitter higher ups? Uh, and it was largely going one way. So I, I don't know how they do it, but is anything actually going to come of this? Mm. Yeah, I mean, because because Elon I, I, I Elon owns highly Twitter doubt now. It because now remember they also buried the Hunter Biden story, which is oh kind yeah, of huge. Another thing, but keep this in mind. Um, when people say, because I'm I'm going to be very careful in my words here, because I am not saying that anything has been proven. No court of law has ever proven anything, uh, in, or has uh, at least been examined in a court of law, but. When the FBI, 50 former intelligence agencies, it wasn't the FBI, it was CIA, former 50 intelligence agents, and there's yeah. no such thing as former in the intelligence community, yeah. signed off on a letter stating that the Hunter Biden laptop story was Russian misinformation. Okay? I want you to keep this in mind. The Oxford English Dictionary definition of rig as a crime Manage or conduct something fraudulently so as to produce a result or situation that is advantageous to a particular person. So I want you. So what did the FBI do <laughs> when they knowingly signed a letter that they knew was false? They managed and conduct something fraudulently, which was sign that letter, so as to produce a result or situation that is advantageous to a particular person, Joseph R. Biden. So by the Oxford English Dictionary definition of rigged, you could point to such a thing that it happened by our government. <laughs> Yeah. Openly interfering in elections. So that is something to keep before your mind with uh, this Twitter file here is we have gone to what I have coined the phrase techno fascist. Uh, we are now in a new era of techno fascism. And now that the emperor wears no clothes, the bigger question is what are we going to do with it? Because like I keep saying, what are these big tech companies going to do with this near godlike power that they've been given to control the narrative? Whatever they can, whatever they want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's, and the, and, that's what's at stake here. And this is this isn't just Twitter. You know, Zuck, Zuckerberg there was on uh, Rogan, and he all but. That he all but admitted that the FBI has a fast track to them as well. So this is this is not exclusive to Twitter. So which is also scary. So um, I, I think this is huge, and I think that not nothing's really going to happen from you know nothing's going to happen from it. Like no one's going to be put in jail. No one's going to get fined. Like it, like this is nothing's going to happen. Even though I think this is one of the worst things to happen uh in a in a long time like uh, i mean because also they were they were 
they were silencing people during COVID and for misinformation when they were actually promoting the people that were promoting misinformation. So, yep, it, it, and like that it, it, that's Ross huge. Guy, like they're proving he just specifically wanted Trump gone. He just hated Trump and yeah. wanted him gone. And so, like it's it's fascinating to see this. And like I said, it's. Uh, it's techno fascism because they couldn't get it done through the law. They couldn't get it done through legislation, but they found a way to silence the disfavored citizens anyways. And so, yeah, that's like, that's what we have now is disfavored citizens, people who are favored citizens and disfavored citizens. And so folks, this is why you need to really oppose the Chinese social credit score. That's coming to America very soon. Yeah. I, 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 anytime I'm, I'm listening to a show and I hear someone say, but don't worry, people are waking up. And I'm like, no, they're not. No, they're mm. not. It's the same people that listen to politics that are listening to politics, the same mad people. <laughs> like, there's only a certain percentage of people that listen and are involved, you know, on a day to day basis who try to stay informed. There's just a very limited people um, who are even decently informed. So, I, I just laugh every time I hear that. <laughs> I've been hearing yeah, it. I've been hearing it since so I started funny. listening to political radio, and it just hasn't happened yet. So I, I'm not. I will not be surprised if absolutely zero happens from this. It's like a, there's a parody song that I actually kind of rewrote years ago, and uh, one of the elect one of the lines is "The election's a lie." And I think you'll find most people know, but they just don't mind. Like, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. it's like, yeah, a lot of people know. They, they just, just accept it. They just yeah, accept it. The, like, the politicians lie and the elections are, are what they are. <laughs> you know, like, meh, whatever. But yeah, one of the lines, and there's calling people sheep, oh, won't wake them up. It's, <laughs> it's unfortunate. Like, you can yell, you can bleat sheep into their face and it's not going to do anything. Yeah. Uh, because the sad truth is swimming alone at sea is not the kind of freedom that a lot of people actually want. Okay. Like it's like, I, I forget who said that, but yeah, it's a great line. Like you'd rather follow the sad truth is a lot of people would rather follow the school into the net because swimming alone at sea is not the kind of freedom that you actually want. And that's uh, unfortunately that's a lot of people. Like we can all think oh, yeah. of at least probably two dozen people off the top of our, of our head that would follow the school right into that net. Well, I mean, it's hard to be responsible and you know, <laughs> and independent. It's it's difficult. So uh, well, also, like I, I don't know, like uh, if in your area of the country you got a lot of cattle pasture. Um, but around here, we've got a lot of cattle pasture and there's a fascinating thing that happens. Like, let's use my American flag here as like kind of an example of a big square cattle pasture and the cows will all be here in the blue area. And then one cow, just one, will start wandering over here to some other area of the pasture. And what will happen is fascinating. <laughs> the entire fucking herd will follow that one cow <laughs> and they don't know why they just know there must be something over here maybe there's better grass over here or something i don't know yeah. and so the entire herd will follow the one cow that breaks away and they have no idea why <laughs> and and it's also kind of funny is that the reason you have to put up fence for cows is because if you don't in a storm they'll die because yeah. it's the difference between an independent wild bison and a domesticated cow. Because a cow, if a storm rolls in, they'll turn their back to the storm and they will walk and they'll follow the storm for miles <laughs> until they die. Uh, like just a drop of exhaustion. Oh my God. And die. A bison, on the other hand, it's why they're so thick and furry up front is because they know and when a storm comes, you turn into the wind and you walk into the wind and you'll get through the storm faster. Jeez. And yeah. so uh, that's the difference between, but yeah, like I know it's like I was giving you that story about followers and being a follower, but it's also just kind of an interesting little difference between being, you know, following your own nature and staying to your own nature and being domesticated. 
It's funny, yeah. Uh, talking persuasion. I was li- I'm listening to a book called Influencer, and it's not influence, influence, not influencer, influence. It's a it's kind of a persuasion slash selling book, and okay. the the author and narrator talks about how they they did an experiment. They uh, they purposely gave the whole group except for one person the wrong answer, and they wanted that whole group to pretend like that was the true answer Mm, and a true gaslight yeah and so that one person who knows who looks at the question knows the right answer but then everyone else around them is saying the wrong answer right like they're saying c but they know that a is the right answer and basically what ends up happening is that person even though they know the right answer is a they they end up saying they end up saying c because they will they won't stray from the group they won't stray from popular opinion they won't they it it's just it's just too hard so not everyone of course but just a lot of people so it, it's funny that you mentioned that. I just instantly thought of that. So they, um, so just the power of persuasion with just a group of people, like just, just, just following oh. the herd. Now, uh, have you ever heard of the Milgram's experiment? Maybe I don't know, recognize the okay. name. Um, this uh, the Milgram experiments was on obedience to authority figures were a series yes. of social psychology yep. experiments conducted at Yale University. Yes. They I measured should. the willingness of a student part- study participant, 40 men in the age range of 20 to 50 from a diverse range of occupations with varying levels of education to obey an authority figure who instructed them to perform acts conflicting with their personal conscience. Participants were led to believe that they were assisting an unrelated experiment in which they had to administer electric shock to a learner. These fake electric shocks gradually increased to the level that would have been fatal had they been real and what was shocking is that the psychologist said like well i mean even though they'll be under orders um it, like it'll be like five percent that actually does it and then they expanded it to not just these men but also to women and to the at one point is 400 people and they found that almost every last one of them got yeah. to the point of a fatal shock because they had a stern looking authority figure telling them that they had to and so it's one of those when you hear people say just following orders it's like eh, boy apparently yeah People will do some crazy shit when under orders. So, like, yep. hearing about that made me immediately think of the Milgram's experiment. And yes. it's like, yeah, the power of persuasion, like I said, is more like you can get somebody that absolutely doesn't believe in killing to administer a fatal level shock just by raising their anxiety and having the power of persuasion. And it's even, it. it's even worse. Like the person that was acting like they were getting the shock was screaming their head mm-hmm. off, right? Like they were pretending like they were oh, being shocked. Yeah. Like, yeah. They like, were they, telling them like, the people kept fucking yeah, getting the they, button. They were telling them, they like, it, this was actually in the persuasion book I was just telling you about. And he, he and they said that uh, the person was, you know, even at one point they were saying, I can't, my chest like something's hurts in my chest something hurts in my chest and they still shock the hell out of him just because the, mm-hmm. the person told them to uh yeah like, there it's was a, only it's two amazing. people that got up and like did anything like, I can't about do this. it like yeah. out of the 400 people they experimented on like there was one lady who just like got up and walked out of the room and then like one guy that tried to like break into the room like what the fuck is going on with this guy <laughs> um and then everybody else just fucking hit, hit, the, button, and hit so, the button yeah. So yeah, the crazy. power of persuasion, like I said earlier, it's more powerful than gravity if wielded properly. So yeah. it's, well, this is well, this is my point. This is in that this is why I was saying like I don't think really anything is going to happen, even though people's rights are being subverted completely. And I, I mean, and it's right there in black and white. If you like, no one's reporting it except for Twitter, right? So no one's really paying attention to to it, other than you know maybe Glenn Greenwald, Matt Taibbi, like actual like independent journalists that no one else reads except no, for a few you don't of need us. To put the but, word independent, just actual journalists. Yeah, sorry, you're right. You're right. Actual, actual journalists, actual people that will go and look for you know truth. It's like and, I don't agree with either of them on a lot, but oh yeah, a ton of stuff. Those two are actual yeah. fucking journalists. It's like Glenn Green, Glenn Greenwald them. is amazing. He he. Like, every time Greenwald I hear him, putting his own life on the line. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, he's 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 awesome. So I um, 
and yeah, and I don't, I think he's a socialist or uh, he's definitely like a left lean. Like, so we definitely politically would not agree with him on quite a few things, but he, I mean, he's a bit more to the left than I am, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, and this is why I don't think stuff is because it's easy to just go along with a herd. It's easy to just say, well, oh, it's not that big a deal and just move along, even though your information's being, you know, stolen from these people and you're being censored. Uh, if you don't go with the main narrative of the government at the time, which is just god awful, and j- I mean, w- I mean, you don't have to hate government like I do, but you should at least be skeptical of them, right? Like, <laughs> like what ha- what happened to that? I was about to say, there's some people that they're so invested in statism that it's almost another religion. It's got its oh, deities, sure. its churches, yeah. its sins, its uh, like its rituals. So to them, it's like you're literally asking like a Catholic to deny the fact that the Pope is the vicar of Christ on earth. <laughs> okay, like it's, it's yeah. to that level. It's that deep. They think that a state edict has the same objectivity as physics. Oh my God, uh, I, I, agree, so, yeah, I agree with you. Like, I, I I just I some people live their life through politics and it and well through their party really and not necessarily politics they just they just live that party line period <laughs> you know and if you're not following that they think you're the devil yeah we are like it's kind of funny when people say like i i always hate when people talk about like oh bipartisanship and reaching across the aisle why do we pretend that this is something like nobody really believes it and nobody actually wants it okay <laughs> so we're at a point where we're i don't know how divided we are as a country and like this is one thing i always use as a barometer because i always talk to like my old man and a lot of his buddies and i ask like okay Things might be bad here, and I've been saying this throughout the years, but was it as bad as the 60s? And usually they're like, nah, nah, the 60s is like, we thought shit was really going to topple over into nothing in the 60s. Like, that was, we we legitimately thought it was done. And it wasn't all that bad. And then something shifted. After the Trump raid on Mar-a-Lago, now they're all like, yeah, this is worse than the 60s, man. I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Ford didn't fucking have LBJ's house fucking raided. Like, what the fuck? Like, no. Like, yeah, this is a lot worse. Like, this is way worse than the 60s. So that made me a little worried when the old timers like, yeah, this is this is actually considerably worse than the 60s. Sorry, kids. Uh, yeah. Like, so that, that worried me. Uh, well, Phil... I think we're going to leave it there. Uh, thank you for coming on tonight. Uh, do you want to do your outro before I do mine? Or would you? do you well, want the I honors? Believe, I believe that's only appropriate, sir. Um, <laughs> as I'm known to say around here and in all the other shows that I appear on, folks, <laughs> all that being said, thank you for joining us here at Dads Worldwide for this exclusive interview with the incredible, the powerful, the pleasurable Phil K.O.E. right here on Dads International, folks. This has been an incredible time. I am your King of Extreme Phil K.O.E., the man of the hour, the man of the power, the man that makes the other podcast cower. You can find me at K.O.E. Nation on YouTube, K.O.E. Nation on TikTok, K.O.E. Nation on Twitch, folks. I hope all of you make it back here to KOE Nation, to Big Bucket Empire, and to Dads Worldwide. Happy, healthy, much the wiser. God bless every last one of you. Travel well, friends. Brendan, take it away. Thank you, sir. And uh, thank you again for coming on tonight. Much appreciated. Love speaking with Phil here. All right, folks, you know how to get a hold of me, Brendan, at dadsww.com, if I could speak. And then... If you can't stand me, you can't stand this episode, you want to talk about Phil behind his back, hate mail at dadsww.com. <laughs> and of course, that'd be read on air, so he'll find out. So just so you know. Sweet. Just so you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, any suggestions for the show, hit me up at my Brendan email address, and uh, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, I have quite a few listens every week i can see them but even from singapore i still see you i still see you uh i i and i barely get to, actually last week i gotta i can't say that last week i got quite a few emails from quite a few 
quite a few people telling me that their kids were also ungrateful twat waffles. So I <laughs> much appreciated for that info, but I want to hear some more. So please hit me up, jump on the socials, Instagram, Twitter, uh, dad's WW or dad's WW podcast on Instagram and uh, Facebook. And uh, please give us a like, a follow, share. All right, folks. Thanks for listening. Later. Dads worldwide. Loyal listeners, possibly you. you, 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 you. Ah, excellent, excellent, excellent time on the Dads Worldwide show. I loved every bit of that. I'll be honest with you, folks. I didn't think the Democrats were actually going to go through with it. I did say, though, if they're going to do it, they're going to do it during primary season. So. That all tracks, sadly, but I didn't think they were actually going to go through with it. But here we are, folks. And yes, that was my appearance on Dads Worldwide.